going to introduce our team to you all. Uh, we do have a couple people from uh, enrollment and recruitment here with us today. We have our recruitment advisor, uh, Amy McDormand and Kim Hinton. Uh, one of our recruitment advisors, Asia, is currently on the road uh, traveling. For enrollment specialists, we have um, myself, Jessica Amandrude. I am an enrollment specialist on our Lloydminster campus for our energy, business, health and wellness, um, and university transfer programs. And then we have Sarah Jane. Um, she is our enrollment specialist for human services, interior design, trades and technology. You can give away SJ if you want to. <laughs> they can see. Um, and then Danny is not with us today. She is our enrollment specialist, Danielle White, for agricultural sciences, environmental sciences, fire and emergency services. If you ever have any questions at all as well, you're welcome to reach out to hello at lakelandcollege.ca and either a recruitment advisor or an enrollment specialist will get back to you. Alrighty, so open house. Our open house is coming up on October 20th and 21st. Um, both days will run from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on both campuses. Um, so you're welcome to attend one or both um, either day. And when you come, you're, all your students are going to be saving the application fee, uh, whether you apply in person or online. We're going to have games. There's going to be tours. Students can learn more about the program of their choice or um, any program really that they might have questions about. And if you would like to bring a group of students, if you'd like to register for that, you can reach out to hello at lakelandcollege.ca and we will make sure to accommodate that. Um, and if you have any questions about bringing a larger group of students, you can reach out about that as well. You can register, students can register individually at lakelandcollege.ca right now, so our registration is open. Um, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. Alrighty, so we're gonna get started. And our first presenter, um, we're gonna have Rochelle with Interior Design. Good morning, Rochelle. Good morning, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can everyone okay, hear Michelle? Okay? okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, I will just speak to our program. Uh, my name is Rochelle Horn. I'm the program head and one of the instructors uh, here on the Vermilion campus for our two year diploma program. Uh, our grade requirements have not changed at all. So if you've gone to this presentation before, um, they'll be the same. Um, Jessica, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, okay, so um, we have the changes that we are kind of looking at for our program, um, we are shifting away from hand drafting and uh, focusing more on the software and technology, but we are teaching all of the programs from the ground up. Um, currently, our program focuses on using AutoCAD as our main drafting tool. Um, we are introducing Revit uh, and we'll be incorporating more of Revit in the next year. Uh, we do teach some of the Adobe programs, um, such as Photoshop and InDesign, and then SketchUp is another one of our main tools. And new with SketchUp, um, we have V-Ray. Uh, we do also work on our hand sketching, um, but again, a little less of the hand rendering. Uh, first year students focus on residential design, um, and then in the last semester we get into our um, commercial design, um, looking at space planning, specification, and construction documents for uh, an overlap of projects throughout courses. Uh, and our students have some professional networking opportunities um, with some of our professional organizations, and I'll speak to those in just a moment. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Okay, I think we've got a couple. <laughs> um, we're doubled up on a couple of them maybe here, but that's okay. Well, okay, perfect, great. Um, so I'm going to brag a little bit. Uh, we had uh, the National Kitchen and Bath Association has announced um, for their 2023 student design competition. We had a student place in second in the kitchen competition, and this is Tierra, and she placed first in the design competition. Um, that means our students have won 18 years in the NKBA student um, competition, and they've accumulated $113,000 in scholarship money through winning in these competitions. Um, both Tierra and Hannah will be flown to Vegas 
in February, and they'll be presented their award at the gala um, and are put up in hotel. And then that's when they also receive their scholarship money. Um, so this was her award winning kitchen um, this year. We can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we do have a transfer agreement with Yorkville University. We have four students currently going through the program. We just had our third student complete the program last week. She defended her um, thesis project. Um, and then we do have an advanced standing agreement with Mount Royal University in Calgary. Um, we've had two complete since I've been here. And then we actually have one who enrolled in this fall. So the Yorkville agreement is almost two for two. Um, the Mount Royal, they're not quite as generous and we get about one year's worth of credits for our students going into their program. And we can go to the next slide, please. Um, we are recognized by three professional associations. So the NKBA, we were the first post-secondary institution to be recognized in Canada by them in 1999. Um, and then a few years ago, the Designer and Decorators Association of Canada Association of Canada uh, advised us they had gone on their own and gone through all the programs and we are a recognized institution also underneath them. For both of those, it means our students qualify to compete in any design competitions that they have and then there's a chance for membership upon graduation. And then new as of last year, this one's a bit longer, DIDAA, the Decorating and Interior Design Association of Alberta has been around for about 20 years, but um, they have some more enthusiastic members in the past couple of years. So they again have gone through embedded programs. We were advised that we were a recognized program last year. They had a student competition and two of our students placed in their competition as well in the spring. And we can go to the next slide, please. Um, new as of the past year, we are offering interior design space planning activity kits that can be sent out to your high school. Um, last year we had a space planning one available and um, PDF format and printable for you to use in the classroom. New for this year, we have that option and then we also have one where we have an AutoCAD file where the students can be doing their space planning within the AutoCAD file. Um, there our activity sheets, PowerPoint presentations, suggestion for additional activities, um, and a suggested assessment sheet um, that are provided for you. So if you are interested, if you could just let SJ know at the hello at Lakeland College email address, that would be great. And I think that's my last slide. Awesome, thank you so much, Rochelle. Thank you. Thanks. All right, next we are gonna have Alan McMillan. Um, with our Agricultural Sciences Department. Morning, everyone. Um, we'll maybe get to an egg slide. <laughs> Thank you. So those are all the different programs that we have at uh, on, on our egg school. We have one year certificates, two year diplomas, and we were what, the first college to offer the Bachelor of Ag Technology degree where you could take all four years on Lake Lands campus and walk out. Um, the only major change in terms of what we're offering is that we've removed one of the majors from our agribusiness diploma. We used to have a sustainability one, but now we have a full ag sustainability diploma. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities for students of all different levels of academic achievement uh, or what their interests are and how many years of post-secondary they want to, to spend with us. Uh, next slide, please. Jessica, thank you. Probably one of our biggest things this year is we had a major donation a couple of years ago from Rita and Armin Mueller to support a bison program. And in this past spring, the college was able to purchase eight quarters to house that, that bison herd. Uh, we also have some put away for um, potential <coughs> haying and feed. One of those, this is just a great example of the, the hands on experience that your students will experience we will have if they do come to Lakelands Ag School. Next slide, please. Um, our blended animal health technology, we graduated our first class last year. That's a two-year diploma. The admission requirements are exactly the same. This is an incredibly high demand profession. Um, the on-campus is probably our most competitive to get into. So this is just another avenue for students that could potentially find a way to certify themselves in this, this industry. 
uh, if they can't come on campus. Um, delivery model obviously is different. All lectures are online. There's usually one live class per week where instructors and students have the opportunity to interact. There are set times for exams and major assessments, so it's not like a uh, go at your own pace type of program. And then they're required to come uh, on campus at least three times per year to do their labs. And uh, I guess the biggest other news here is due to some funding increases provided by the provincial government, we're going to be able to increase the number of seats that we have in our blended program starting in September 2024. So if a student is unsuccessful getting into the on-campus one, and if they have the skills um, to work independently, this may be another option for them. Uh, next, next slide, please. Um, again, our on-campus program went under an extensive uh, review over the last two years in terms of um, course delivery and laddering and, and how it's going to be instructed. Uh, the goal is to, again, create the best graduates that we can that have the opportunity to be successful in industry, do well on their VTNE exam. So just, I think this just highlights the, the commitment that the Ag School has to consistently staying up to industry programs and allowing our students to be very successful once they leave us and move into industry. Next, please, Jess. Uh, this is not, so the Bachelor of Ag Tech, we, again, we graduated our first group last year. This is not a direct entry from high school program. Students must complete one of the two-year diplomas that we have either on campus. We will also look at students that graduate from old with a two-year diploma or Lethbridge College. Um, we had 21 graduates in the spring of 2023. The really cool thing about this program is that their fourth year of university is actually a full-time practicum experience. They had eight months of work. Um, where they're paid and what was very exciting for the second straight year we had more internship opportunities and students in the program so we have industry reaching out to us saying hey we want your students this is this is a really growing area in ag um, and it's just also a very different way so this may be an opportunity for in particular maybe some of your dash two students that wouldn't have all of the requirements to go to degree to walk up so I would encourage them. We will, we will be having a session on the BAT program at our open house. So if you've got a couple of students that may not fit the, the traditional demographic of a university student, we all know them. They're they're really strong students. They can learn really well. Maybe there's not high school that's really lit their fire, and ag is their thing. This may be a great pathway for them. Um, next slide, please. And so what would I tell my students? I know one of the biggest challenges I had as a high school counselor, uh, sometimes it was really hard to convince my own students to go to Lakeland because they all want to pack up and move hundreds of miles away because it is, it's not that they, they just want to get away from mom and dad and, and what they've experienced for 18 years. Uh, but we are a great college that offers their foot into the door and a ton of different opportunities, particularly ag. Um, ag is a growing industry. We have massive labor shortages. So even if you're not a farm kid, please consider a career in agriculture. We will give you the foundational skills to get you into an entry level position. And then time in your own skills can, can be a great pathway to a, to a lifelong career. Uh, apply early. October 1st is traditionally the first day that students are allowed to apply. October to the open house, it's free application. If you can apply then, we've had, um, programs that have waiting lists, animal health, both blended and on campus always have waiting lists. Crop technology was literally one or two students away from a waiting list this year. Equine numbers continue to rise. So if, if you're thinking about ag, please get your name in early. Come visit us on campus. Uh, I think once you get a feel for who we are and what we do, the culture of the ag school is incredibly welcoming and, and uh, Farm kids love coming to us because they're surrounded by people that are interested and, and are lit up by the things that light them up. Um, and we're also, if you're not quite ready for the big city, I don't know how many students I get in my office as academic advisor that are grateful for our smaller class sizes. The town of Vermillion itself is only 4,000 people. We have all the services that you need. Uh, and we do, just like most other programs, we have transfer agreements for further study 
with the U of A, the University of Saskatchewan, and the University of Lethbridge. So we can be a great transition school for someone coming from a smaller community that may not quite be ready for Edmonton or Saskatoon or Lethbridge. And with that, I would offer myself up to open to any questions as folks have it. Other than that, that's that's what's new in Ag. Awesome. Thank you, Alan. Take a look and see if we've got any questions in the chat. Anyone has any questions and you think about them later, feel free to put them in the chat and we can address them at the end as well. Awesome. Alrighty, so next we're going to have Sean with Fire and Emergency Services. Good morning, everyone. Um, oh, I don't know why I'm echoing. Okay, looks like we're good. So, um, good morning. My name is Sean McCary. I'm the Dean of the Emergency Training Center at Lakeland College. I'm also extremely proud to have come here as a, in my initial foundation education for my fire service career. Um, so very proud to be a, a Lakeland College graduate and now spent my time in the fire service emergency service world and now back at the helm of the emergency training center. So I think we're doing some really exciting stuff. Hopefully showcase some of that for you this morning. Um, what I think we really pride ourselves over here on is the, the whole concept of ready for the real world. Uh, one of our old mantras in the past was also live ready. Um, and we really got to experience that with our students this year as we took our emergency service technology diploma students out, uh, 27 of them and, and included five staff. And we actually got to take them and work on a wildfire out in Parkland County this year because everybody in Western Canada was burning to the ground. Uh, so we were able and invited to join the wildfire effort. And uh, um, we threw that up to the college leadership and I was able to convince them to let me take uh, 21 students out and we had a mind blowing experience for them. Uh, it was it was very profound. It was awesome for them to get all the um, the exposure uh, to such an activity. But uh, when we come back on campus, uh, that's the same thing is we try to create a real world experience out in our emergency training field um, out here. We try to treat our, our students as in a fire station type environment while they're here. Uh, so you really get that kind of jump start to entering into the emergency services world, whether it be paramedic or, or firefighter. So you can gladly jump ahead to the next slide, please. So within our programs, we have our pre-employment programs. We have two options there for students looking to get into uh, to firefighting, let's say. We have a 12-week firefighter program uh, that is on campus. We run that uh, multiple times throughout the year. And then we also offer a hybrid solution for that where you can learn online uh, away for 12 weeks and then you come for five weeks on site. The only caution I have with students entering in one or the other, I think the 12 week on campus is a whole, you get a whole nother level of experience being here and being involved in what we're doing. Uh, then the five week program, because you're here for such a condensed time. Um, but then again, people that need to learn online, at least I've got that option for them, but definitely strongly encourage people to come here. Uh, with the scale and resources we have are astounding and it, I hate for people to shortchange themselves, I guess, if, if they don't have to. We then have an accelerated diploma program. Like I said, I actually graduated that about 20 years ago myself. Uh, I took the fire stream, but we also have a medical stream. Uh, so students start uh, and they pick which lane they want to go into. The medical stream will provide a student with their firefighter certifications as well as their primary care paramedic, which that'll open a lot of doors to the more metro fire departments in, in Alberta and in BC and Saskatchewan, I see probably mostly across Canada, um, but lots of them that do run police or sorry, run ambulance and fire trucks. Uh, they require those people to have certifications or those recruits to be both firefighter and paramedic. So there's lots of opportunity there. On the fire stream, you become a very highly qualified firefighter uh, that includes uh, fire inspector certifications, technical rescue, uh, hazardous material response. It gives you a whole bunch of more certifications that you can get into a few different pockets of, um, I guess, occupations um, and, and with the different employers versus just solely going after a fire department. It gives you a lot of options. For afterwards, after that, we then do have a degree program, which is solely online. Um, it's our Bachelor of Applied Business and Emergency Services. Um, again, that's a great program for us. We're the only institution in Canada that has something like that that's very much focused on emergency services. And I should also say emergency service technology program is also the only one of its kind in Canada. A couple of people have tried to copy us 
um, but they, they don't come close, I guess, at the end of the day. And then furthermore, we have a ton of other courses that people can come and take on a one week or two week basis, whether it be you're adding it on to your certificate or your diploma programs. But you can come here and you can get your certification in high angle rescue. So you can do rope and technical rescue. You can do confined space training, wildland firefighting, um, all sorts of good stuff here. Um, fortunately, because of um, our resources, we do have. So you can jump again to the next slide, please. Um, a few advantages I tell our students or prospective students that are interested in coming here. There is a number of private institutions in Canada that are teaching your firefighter certification. So I always encourage them that we are really, there's a couple schools in Ontario and a couple or in one in BC that are really truly colleges. And so I encourage them first and foremost to look at a college program. Um, of course, I'm biased to my program or our programs here. I'd get them here first and foremost, but look at the colleges because you're going to get academic credits for the courses you take there. Private institutions, it's a little bit different and it's a little bit, it's easier, I guess, through us, especially when you get into the emergency services and later on down the road, you're looking at that degree program to, you know, jump off of the fire truck and get into administration or, you know, say you're ready to exit that, that lifestyle and want to look at something else. So academics are academic credits are very important, but it's that's a very long term thinking piece. And I know many students aren't thinking that way, but I always encourage them to get academic credits. The other one as a college, um, again, all the college resources we have behind us, I always like to joke that we have a fitness facility and a full pool on campus where many private institutions, they just don't have that. So I always joke, well, do they have a pool? They say, well, we do. We also have our, our athletic programming, and, and next year we are celebrating our 65th year on our emergency service training campus here uh, with the government of Alberta establishing us back in 1958. So that's a big milestone for us. And our field training, our, our training field is the largest in Canada by far. Um, with the amount of resources and, and infrastructure we have, uh, we blow everybody else away. You can see the bottom picture there, that's a multi-level complex. We get to do some really fun and exciting stuff out here. Uh, fortunately, because the infrastructure we have and uh, it's, I'll be honest, no one else can touch us in Canada for what we have. We have a seven story fire training tower. Um, we have you know 15 fire apparatus here. Uh, we have an impressive, uh, I can't say enough, impressive infrastructure for anybody looking to get into this type of field. We're definitely the place to train on. You can jump to the next slide, please. And just to hopefully, I guess, solidify everything I'm telling you by my you know, conversation today or talking about it, I would really strongly encourage uh, any of you to jump on or, or if anybody's interested that you're working with that wants to become a first responder or a firefighter or a paramedic, um, to jump on our Instagram, that's definitely where we really showcase the really cool experience and environment students get to take part in while they're here. Uh, that's probably our number one place that we show off that. Uh, so strongly encourage people to jump on there and check us out. And then we've, uh, we're trying to make a more concerted effort to also match what we do on Instagram with our LinkedIn and Facebook. But first and foremost, again, for prospective students, that's where we push everybody is check us out on Instagram. We do some really cool stuff and that's the best place to see it. Um, I'm very passionate about our center. I'm very excited um, about where we're going and everything. So I'll just now shut up and turn it over for questions. <laughs> Shauna, I will find the admission requirements and I'll put them in the chat here in just a minute. Alrighty, and if anyone else does have questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat and we will get to them. Alrighty. Okay, next we're gonna have Cassandra with Environmental Sciences. Thanks so much, Cassandra. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm the Chair of Environmental Sciences. Uh, so in our program, we have uh, a first year certificate or one year certificate, I should say, a two year diploma, and then also a four year applied degree program. Uh, so, so similar to the different options that the School of Agriculture off offers. Um, we have been working over the last year on some major name changes. So some of the two year diploma names that you see there may be different from what you have seen in the past. 
Um, we're sort of offering similar programming in those, but we have been streamlining those to really meet the requirements by the different regulating bodies. So in the province of Alberta to work in environmental science, you need to have either a registered technologist um, designation or a professional agrologist designation. So we've been working really hard to align all of our programs so that our students can work in the industry when they are done with us in our programming. Um, a couple of the newer ones would be that renewable resource reclamation, which is a two year diploma. For that one, you do your common first year and then in second year, you have some online options with some face to face classes. And so you can take some renewable energy classes online. So that one's a little bit different than uh, the other two year diplomas, which are full face to face for the entire two years. Um, our Bachelor of Applied Sciences in Management program, that one we have streamlined as well. There used to be two majors. Now it is 10 courses that are specific uh, to that Bachelor of Applied Sciences. Another thing with the Bachelor of Applied Sciences, the pathway has now been created that they can go from that program into a master's program. So we've had students do that at the University of Saskatchewan. And that's really great. In the past, some of those po other post-secondaries weren't recognizing that as a pathway to the master's program, but now it is being recognized as that. Um, our one-year certificate, just jump, jump back to that one. We're seeing lots of students come in for that, and then they're choosing to stay with us for that second year. So that's really great. A little less commitment, you know, coming in for a one-year certificate, and then they can choose where they want to head for their diploma. We can move forward. All right, so we pride ourselves, of course, on being out in the field and getting our students those hands on job ready skills. Uh, we're really lucky here at Lakeland. We have forested sites, agricultural sites, peatlands, um, wetlands, all sorts of different land uses right out our back door. And so it's really fun that we can get our students out to all of these different ecosystems and land uses. Um, we have oil wells right on our property as well. And so all of these things are readily available for us to take our students out to. In second year, we have the students doing um, a field week in September. So that's a whole week that's des um, dedicated to doing field skills. So you can see some students out in a boat doing some catching with nets, um, soil science, plant science, all of those different things. We can go forward. All right, uh, so there are two different ways that you can bring environmental sciences into your school prior to sending students to us. The first one is our um, soils lab box. So this is a box that we will ship out to you for free to any teacher for their classroom. And what it is, is a lab kit for soil hand texturing. And so there's an instructional video, there's instructions for the teacher. Um, there's more information about environmental sciences programming. And pretty much you can open this box in your lab and run this lab. And it would take about 40 minutes to move through this activity. Um, and really user friendly. So if you're interested in getting one of these soil kits, you can just contact um, hello at lakelandcollege.ca and we will happily send one out for you. Also, just I included a picture here of our soils lab. Uh, we, a few years ago, got brand new labs for environmental sciences. So we have one designated to aquatics, one to soils, one to plants, and one to chemistry. And they're, they're beautiful updated spaces that we get to work in. And then the other thing that I should have included on the slide here, but I didn't, is that we are hosting Envirothon, the Alberta Envirothon again this year on campus. And that's May 1st to 3rd. And that is a high school competition that we have students come and they compete in different areas, in environmental science. So I will throw the link to the website for that up in the chat, maybe once I'm done, and we would happily accept uh, teams for that as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Cassandra. And we're gonna have Chris Thompson next with Trades and Technology. Good morning, everyone. 
I'm Chris Thompson, I'm the Chair of Trades here at Lakeland College. Yeah, and huge shortage in uh, skilled trades across the country. Uh, and the six Red Seal certified trades that we teach here at the college, as you can see here. Uh, one of the great things about apprenticeship training is if you complete your first year, including on the job training and technical training, uh, you will receive a $1,000 grant. Same thing goes with the uh, second year. And then when you do receive your journey person status, you'll get a $2,000 grant. So it pays for a lot of your uh, schooling tuition. Uh, so that's a great thing about apprenticeship training. Our shops are continually being upgraded with equipment uh, as we try to stay in, uh, as close to advanced technology as we can. Uh, next slide, please, Jessica. Uh, other programs we have, which are other great ways of getting into trades is our pre-employment program. So we have both automotive service, welding and electrician, and they are a 12 week program with a one month practicum at the end. And the great thing that we're seeing with this is we're seeing well over 80% employment rate uh, with these practicums going out. So uh, they get out on their practicum and they actually receive a job and get indentured as an apprentice and continue on with their career. We do a uh, truck driver training out of our Lloyd Minister area. Uh, with the MELT program, class three, and also the air brake endorsement. Next slide, Jess. A uh, huge amount of continuing education, anything from B pressure prep to testing, all the way down to introduction to trades courses, vehicle restoration, uh, master electrician. So a huge contingent of continuing education programs that we have here. Next slide, Jess. Uh, very important links that will give you any more information that you require as far as trades go and anything with trades and technology here at the college. And if there's any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And one other great option for your students that might interest them if they have an interest in one of the trades is they can sure uh, contact myself and they can come and be a, a student for a day and actually see what it's like to come and attend technical training. If there's any questions. Okay, I see we have a question about the MELT uh, class one training. Okay. So who covers the cost of class one training? Is it part of the tuition cost? Uh, so the class one training is, is paid um, totally on your own. There is some government programs out there to encourage you to get your class one training. It is 121 hours of training uh, done both in classroom and obviously uh, in the trucks. Great, thank you, Chris. Yeah. Anyone else who has questions, feel free to add them as well. Oh, and we have some requests. We'll make sure anyone who would like any of the kits that we offer, um, we will make sure that we get them out to you for sure. I'm just going to reiterate our open house dates. So I think they're up here, you can see. Again, October 20th and 21st, you're welcome to bring um, your students. If you wanna register a group, feel free to reach out to us at hello at lakelinecollege.ca uh, or any one of our staff members, I'll put their emails at the end of this presentation. Um, and if students are just wanting to register on their own, they can yeah. register at lakelandcollege.ca as well. Um, just a couple other items. We do have info sessions um, on March 7th and March 8th of uh, 2024. So information sessions will be happening this year as well. We're going to go ahead to energy right now. Actually, we're just gonna jump ahead a little bit. So for energy, we have Amanda with us, our academic advisor, um, and she's going to touch on our energy programs. So good morning. Uh, we have a couple updates. Um, well, we have a few updates moving forward with our uh, next intake of power engineering. Um, so probably our biggest, a big notable is that we are no longer going to be promoting our one year certificate as an entry option. Uh, pretty soon that will be taken off of our website. Um, and all our marketing ads. We are really pushing students to go into the two-year diploma. That was what industry is really wanting to see students do, is to complete their, um, their two-year diploma. Um, the one-year certificate will be an exit-only option, so students that come into the two-year diploma and decide that they only want to stay a year will have the option to exit with a one-year certificate, um, but we're not going to be encouraging students to apply and we won't be, we won't have any um, buddy or we won't be accepting applications for the one-year certificate anymore. That being said, our process and power engineering program, um, same as, as it has been in previous years, students will complete their fourth class certification uh, within their first year. 
and they will go on and complete their third class certification for their second year. Uh, within the two years, they'll have two industry approved practicums. Uh, one is between December and January, um, and that is for their fourth class STEAM hours. It's one and a half months and 240 hours on, uh, on site with a host. And then our second practicum is offered between May and August, uh, between their first and second year. It's three months and 480 hours. And we typically, although we don't like to promote that, that second year practicum uh, is paid, but we have seen in the last two years that any student who goes on that is getting paid. I think there was only one or two students um, that did not get paid on that second class, second year practicum. Um, just, um, I actually, the slide is incorrect here. You'll see sustainable, sustainable energy technology. That um, program now is moved into the School of Environmental Sciences. So that's no longer under our wing. And then of course we have, we still offer our fourth class online. Uh, it's completely online for students to take um, at their own discretion and it is self-paced. We do have it, instructors on campus that do help um, any online student that struggles or that needs um, additional help, uh, which is which is kind of uh, is different than a lot of other post-secondary institutions with their fourth class power engineering online. The student is completely self-directed with no contact with instructors. Uh, we offer that contact if necessary. Um, so next slide. Um, so. Um, our STEAM labs are our top of the line, our, um, our Synovus lab, uh, which we, we refer to now as our production lab, um, is state of the art and probably the best STEAM lab. It is the best STEAM lab in Canada. Um, so students are really learning by doing. Um, anybody who comes through that classroom or the STEAM lab uh, is just amazed at the facilities that we have. There is no other college in Canada that can match that steam lab for sure. Uh, we just put in a ton of upgrades um, in partnership with Apex uh, to our control room. Uh, so now students truly get um, what they are getting experience with what they are experiencing uh, when they go out on site and when they're uh, employed as a power engineer. Um, again, I already talked about our practicums. Um, it's notable to, um, to incoming students that the first practicum is over Christmas. So depending on when their, um, um, their shift lies, they're usually 12 on 12 off, uh, or sorry, seven on seven off, 12 hour shifts. Um, they may be working over Christmas and that uh, really mimics as well industry, um, but it's the only way as well that we can get that fourth class practicum done in time for them to return the end of January and finish up in April. Um, we are developing some amazing relationships with some of the key leaders in the power engineering industry. Um, they are coming to us um, regularly wanting to recruit our students. Uh, we've already had several partners come or industry, uh, industry come to our classroom uh, in first year to talk about their uh, employment opportunities and really wanting to get ahead of the game for getting our students, uh, industries such as Synovus, Shell, Dow Chemical, CNRL, um, Strathcona, they're all they're all kind of knocking at our doors for our students. Next slide. Excuse me. Uh, so I already touched on this. Our two-year diploma again is what we're really encouraging. Um, in less than two years, you'll become a third-class power engineer and work anywhere and there is a steam flower plant. This is different than a lot of other post-secondary institutions in that once students complete two years at other institutions, they still have to do their practicum. We um, include that practicum within their two years. So students um, in two complete years will have their third class um, STEAM time or third class certification. First year students will in a first call, fourth class, <clears throat> excuse me, oh my goodness, um, and I guess the second year students will start training in the state of the art Sonova's production lab. Um, we talked about uh, includes a five month practicum. 
or sorry, a one and a half month practicum in industry. Uh, students do get to choose where they want or have some say in where they want to go. If they're uh, from Lloydminster and they really want to go to Synovus and stay um, in Lloydminster, that is an opportunity. Whereas if they're from the Port Saskatchewan industry and they'd rather go to Shell, um, we've got we've got connections up there. So we do ask students uh, within the first month of starting in September where they would like to go on practicum and we work at that over over the course of the following months to get students placed. We strive to get every student placed by end of October. Um, and last year we hit that we hit that target easily. Um, we are seeing a shift in a little bit of what um, our industry hosts are requiring. Um, Synovus and Pempana or Interpipeline actually would like to conduct interviews with the practicum students. So um, resume development, learning works, work ethic, uh, learning interview skills has been a really hard push in the first couple months here or I should say the first month and a half um, that they've been in class. Uh, so if students want to get ahead of the game, that's something that they really should be focusing on. Um, no change in the admission requirements um, in regards to the two-year diploma. Um, they do need a 50% in a physics 20, chemistry 20, or science 20. Physics 20 is preferred because uh, the, the um, program is physics and math heavy. Um, we also are seeing, and are struggling this year a little bit in regards to our students' uh, study skills and um, um, knowledge in how to apply themselves within the classroom. Um, so we've had lots of conversations about um, making sure students are, or how can we make students sure students are ready uh, when they come in uh, end of August is their first day in class, it, they really hit the ground running and there isn't a lot of time to start learning those study skills and that, that preparation and how to be a good student at the forefront of our program. So the more students are prepared um, in high school and leading into post-secondary, they'll be that much more, more further ahead. Further ahead. Um, again, this, this program is well student for anyone with an interest in math or an aptitude for physics. Next slide. Um, so something that's new is this fall. So our current intake is going to have the option to select electives that will help them tailor and um, expand their skill set. Um, this is brand new. Previously, all students took heavy oil courses um, as as kind of that elective um, those elective classes, uh, but now we're giving students the option. So. Uh, their first year in this fall, before they go and go out, go, go out for their Christmas practicum, uh, we're going to have the students pick a couple of electives. They can choose from a heavy oil focus, a gas processor operator focus, or a sustainable energy um, focus. So this will just allow them to kind of tailor their um, their their experiences and tailor their knowledge to kind of the industry that they are interested in. Um, these will be all online, uh, so they will, so um, students should be um, knowledgeable and disciplined enough to complete some online learning. Next slide. Uh, so where can you work? Um, I always refer people to the ALIS website when they are um, wondering what the heck a power engineer does. Um, where where students can work there there's a great video on ALIS about what exactly power engineers do uh, right now currently there's a huge demand for power engineers uh, certainly those with their third class certification um, and and really the range and depth of places that students can work is quite broad um, great great salary figures coming out of of school um, you're looking at the $94,000 plus range um, for any student that completes their third class. Um, it's certainly a great option for anyone wanting um, to become a power engineer. Um, this spring, 100% of, of our students receive paid practicums between May and August. 
I always, I already talked about that. Um, and another notable from last year is 100% um, of our first year students passed their provincial exam. That has never been done in Canada. Um, and certainly never have been done at our college um, as long as power engineering has been run. So it certainly is a testament to the work that our instructors put in to ensuring that the students are um, well qualified and well prepared to write those provincial exams. And I think that's it. Wonderful, thank you, Amanda. Again, if anyone has questions, how deep is the wait list to get into power engineering? Um, currently no wait list, applications just open on October 1st. Um, that program did wait list last year, so we do encourage students to apply to that program um, early. And Amanda, I don't know if you wanted to speak to that at all, but um, um, definitely encourage. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely uh, apply sooner than later. Um, for 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 the purposes of not getting on a wait list and getting a seat in the program and just getting mentally prepared as well. Um, like I said, this year students, um, a, a broad, broad range of students, I don't think we're prepared for the pace that this program is. Um, so certainly those that are ahead of the game in every way, shape or form uh, will just find their first year in the program that much easier. Um, the other, another thing that um, is an option for students is if they are wanting to do the fourth class online, um, they do have the option of coming into the second year of the program um, once they've completed their fourth class certification. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Do the qualifications they receive in this program transfer to working in other provinces like Saskatchewan? Um, Amanda, did you want to touch on the transferability between ABSA, TSAS, that sort of thing? Sure. So yes, it does. Um, so we we will certify students or we prepare students to write the Alberta Boilers Safety Association provincial exams. Um, so students will be certified to work in Alberta if they pass their Alberta examinations and get the steam time that they require. All that's re all that needs to happen once they receive their Alberta cert certificate of competency is it's a simple transfer between the provinces um, and it's a simple form. We actually have um, a lot of students that go on practicum in, Saskat in Saskatchewan and we just there's just an additional form that needs to be filled out. So very easy to transfer. Um, between Alberta and Saskatchewan. We've actually had some students that have done their practicum in BC. So again, it's just a matter of a simple form. Um, when you're looking at more towards Manitoba, Ontario, I really recommend um, that um, students be proactive and call the pro province that they're wanting to be certified in or work in uh, their governing body just to make sure that they're aware of everything they need to do, because it does it does vary between province and province. But as far as Alberta and Saskatchewan, um, it's easy, absolutely easy to do. Thanks, Amanda. And if any of your students do have questions about that, um, I mean, generally they, they can reach out to us um, and I can give them a little bit of information too that I have on uh, out of province students interested in the in the online class as well. Absolutely. Um, also, yeah, is this um, first qualified, first accepted? Uh, yes, it is. This program is first qualified, first accepted. So um, the sooner students apply, the sooner and that if they meet the qualifications then um, they can get on that, uh, they can get a spot before it's waitlisted. And I do, I just, I really want to, oh, sorry, I just really want to stress any counselors that are talking to students that are interested in this program um, to really hammer down and work on their study skills, work on, um, on, on all of those skills that will make them successful in the program, um, because it does come quick and it comes fast and hard at them, um, end of January, or end, beginning, end of August, I should say. Um, so, so they, like I said before, they don't have a lot of time to figure that out once they're here and in the program. Um, but if they're ahead of the game, 
Uh, it's extremely rewarding and uh, um, the career is incredible and the facilities that you, they will train in are, are second to none. Absolutely. And if you come out to our open house, we have some amazing students uh, from our energy programs that are going to be touring um, and speaking about the program as well. So you can get um, just a firsthand experience uh, from the students that are currently in the program and um, what their take on the program is. So definitely encourage you to come out for that. All right, so we'll jump into um, our next department here. We are going to have Deb Nish, our chair of health and wellness. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Deb and I'm the chair of health and wellness. Um, under health and wellness, we have three programs, or actually five programs. We have hairstyling, barbering, esthetician, clinical esthetician, and healthcare aid. So hairstyling is a 1400 hour program. It is 35 hours a week and five days a week. So it is a long time to be here and it's 10 months a year. You, um, It's a regulated program. Um, so they come here and they get a certificate. After they get their certificate, then they go and apply for their apprenticeship in Alberta or Saskatchewan. And then they do their apprenticeship hours and uh, then they write their exams and so on and so forth. Um, we do have a, they do practicum, but we have a working uh, salon in our school that is relatively brand new and so they do all their practicum hours here with um, several instructors supervising them. We also have um, what's called a public clinic where people can come in for a nominal cost and have their hair or whatever done. Like you can see this girl in the picture, um, she's part of the barbering program. So the barbers come in with the hairstylist and they pretty much do all the same theory in the beginning as the hairstylist um, and they learn primarily barbering and cutting, that's it, and then they're done at Christmas. This barbering is our second year and it's been really successful and it's been good for um, even for hairstylists. So last year, for example, we lost three hairstylists at Christmas due to funding or health or whatever it may be. And we were able to give them a barbering certificate so they didn't walk away with nothing. And same for um, barbering. A couple of them, have, like last year, one decided to stay and this year two have decided to stay and complete the whole hairstyling certificate. So it works really well together. Um, esthetician is not government regulated, so it's a 600 hour program and it's really fast paced. We have a spa here. It's a working spa. Same sort of um, rule applies where they do lectures, labs, and then they do public clinics and that's where they get their practicum. Um, it's a both esthetician and hair has been this year majorly oversubscribed. So we're bursting at the seams. So it is a first come first serve sort of thing. Um, we kind of kept upping it thinking that it would be fine and it is fine and we've got everything worked out, but we've had to make some different cohorts and such to make room for the students because there is so many. Um, after you become an esthetician, which is 30 weeks, you can choose to stay on for seven more weeks and become a clinical esthetician. This is definitely the way the world is going. Um, people want results and they want them fast and they don't want any downtime. So in clinical, they'll learn. We have a, a laser machine, which is you know top of the line. Um, it removes just about everything. We teach them chemical peels, advanced chemical peels, microdermabrasion, microneedling, and dermaplaning, which are all kind of a medical thing um, under the supervision of qualified instructors. Um, healthcare aid, um, we're running it in Lloydminster right now. We unfortunately didn't have enough students to run it in Wainwright. Um, We've seen a significant drop all over Alberta in healthcare aid because Alberta Health took it over and they're trying to regulate it into like with the nursing body, which is good news and bad news. But um, the bad news for us is that, uh, well, the good news is um, Alberta has to all adhere to the same exact curriculum and we get audited every year and they have to 
we get we get rated on points and you get given so much time and then you're audited again. Um, so uh, with the Lloydminster one, the only thing that's, well, actually quite a lot has changed. Um, it used to be just weekends and now we're doing a blended program. So we're doing weekends and weekdays. So right now the students are coming Monday through Thursday and they're going to school during the day. And then the weekend ones will do their online work theory and then they'll come in here and they'll do the labs and the written exam with the people that are here on campus. Um, the entrance requirements for that, that's one of the roadblocks that we've seen that we've been having have gone up quite significantly. So I don't have them, but maybe um, one of the ladies have them for you. And they do do three practicums um, and they're unpaid. And so the student should know that kind of coming in that they are responsible for their practicums and a lot of the stuff that happens within the program, um, we have no control over. It's Alberta Health. So the practicums are either usually they're instructor led. So eight, eight um, people to one in, one uh, an instructor in, until the last one, which is buddy led, which means you're buddied up with someone likely another healthcare aide who will watch you and teach you and show you what they're doing. Um, so beyond the three practicums now instead of two, oh, the last thing is they won't get a certificate from us until they do their final exam, provincial exam now, there never used to be one. So now they have a provincial exam, they get three attempts within 60 days to write it. And if they don't pass, they actually have to go back to school. Luckily for us, last year we had 100% rate. Um, we haven't had anyone not pass. We've had some that have opted to just not do it, but we have any, anyone who's done it has passed. So uh, as far as win rate goes, we're hoping that maybe there'll be enough enrollment for next year, but we weren't we weren't as unfortunate as fortunate this year. That's about it. If anyone has any questions. Awesome. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. I'll go ahead and put the healthcare aid uh, requirements in the chat after as well. Um, they have changed. So uh, it, it is in English as an academic subject, and then it's English language proficiency, um, two different components there. Uh, so it's a little bit lengthy. I'll put it in the chat if anyone has questions about that. Um, you can definitely reach out to and I can give you an in-depth overview of what the student would require. Um, so we're actually just going to circle back. You're going to have Kelly with Human Services. Hi, Kelly. Good morning. So our Human Services programming here at Lakeland College, uh, we offer a variety of different programs from certificates to diplomas to post-credential certificates as well. If you could click, please. So our one year certificates, it's American Sign Language and Deaf, Deaf Culture Studies. It's offered on campus at the Alberta School for the Deaf in Edmonton. So the students are immersed in their environment. Uh, during COVID, we offered it online, but we find that we have to see the students' hands in the air. We have to see their expression. So the best way for us to offer it is on campus so that they come take it face to face because they're really learning a language and that involves face-to-face -face discussions. They have small classes and it's a one-year program that's offered in Edmonton. All of our other human services programs are offered a variety of online or on campus. We do 10 weeks in the classroom and then we go out for four weeks on practicums. We do practicum in the fall and the winter. So the students are able to build their resumes so they get the theory and they also get the practice. So we have early childhood education that's offered online as well as on campus. The students that come on campus, they have access to the daycare that's right here. Uh, we're under renovation at the moment, so the daycare used to be attached to the classroom, but now we just have to take a little stroll to go and work directly with the children. So they have access right in September to apply what they're learning in class to work with the children that come to our daycare, and then they go out on practicum for the four weeks at the mid-November till mid-December 
they come back on campus in January and then go out on practicum again in April. So they graduate with their certificate, which is recognized as a level two in Alberta. So they're early childhood educators, and it's also at ECE2 in Saskatchewan. We have a lot of students that come from Saskatchewan. Um, our students that are online, they can choose to be part-time or they can be full-time. Our programs offered asynchronously, so content is released on the Monday. They have the whole week to complete it before new content is released the following Monday for the 10 weeks of the term. They have specific deadlines for assignments and exams. So they can't wait to hand it all in at the end. And of course, they have an instructor that is there to monitor the discussions and answer questions. So the online, they can apply in September, in January, or to start in the spring. So we have the, the three terms, a fall, winter, and spring. On campus, we only do a fall intake. Our educational assistant program is new. It's only being offered online this year. So it's for students that would like a little bit more structure in their environment. They would like older children, so they'd like to be able to work in the school from kindergarten up to grade 12. There are certainly a lot of jobs in the field, so we find that a lot of people are getting a job as an educational assistant and then coming to us for more of a professional development to develop those skills that they need to, to be able to work with the, the children or the students in their schools. Uh, what's great about our educational assistant program is that you can tailor it to fit your needs as we have a number of electives that we offer so the students are able to build their skill set according to the environment that they're in or what their interests are. So one of the electives is the American Sign Language and Deaf Culture Studies course ASL 101 that is offered uh, two evenings a week. They also have our animal assisted interventions if they're interested in partnering with animals to help children to read or um, self-regulate. They have um, personal assistance awareness, so those are lifts and transfers and feeding tubes and all the physical care that some students require. So it's a great program for that because they're able to tailor it to meet their needs. The two-year diploma then for child and youth care counselor, they apply and they come right into a diploma program. Upon graduation, they are recognized as level three early childhood educators in Alberta. Um, it's offered online and on campus. If students if students would like to work with families, children, youth at risk, some of our practicum sites include the Women's Shelter, they work at the Boys and Girls Club, they work as early intervention, they work as family school liaisons in the school, so kind of a little bit off to um, people who need support in society. It's online it's starting in fall winter or spring or on campus you can start in the fall our new program is community support practitioners so there'll be more on that on the next slide it's starting in the fall of 2024 it's offered as well online and on campus working more with adults with disabilities or older adults senior care and that there'll be more on that on the next slide because it's new our early childhood education, what's new starting in the fall of 2024 is that they can apply directly to the diploma. So if your students are looking to come in, they know they want a diploma program, then instead of applying to the certificate, graduating and then applying to the diploma, we've made it more seamless so they can come in directly into a diploma program from the start. So they would take four terms. They would take their courses still over 10 weeks with the practicum, so they would end up with four practicums. The on-campus students create a play program for their diploma practicum. They transform two of the classrooms on campus. One is for infants and toddlers, and one is for preschoolers, and they invite the children of the community and their families to come and experience the play program for free. So they design the parent handbook, they do registration, they do all the programming, they do the menu planning, the field trips, and that takes place three weeks from November, mid-November to mid-December on campus. And it's a great experience for them because when they graduate, they will be supervisors. They'll be allowed to be a director of a daycare. So they've had a chance to practice running their own daycare play program on campus. The online students, we've created a virtual experience for them so they can work with their colleagues to develop a virtual play program. And if they make a mistake when they're going through the scenario, the licensing officer arrives and shuts them down. <laughs> the post-credential certificates are for students that have already graduated. So they already have a certificate 
in, as an educational assistant and they want to continue their studies. Our specialty is animal assisted wellness. So if they would like to partner with animals, we partner with Dreamcatcher in Adrosin to offer a clinical experience that goes along with their courses. So it's nine courses and a clinical experience for them to specialize in partnering with animals along with their human service skill set. Our community mental health is very interesting as well. So if you're already a teacher or you're already an early childhood educator, then you would come to take our community mental health courses if that's an area that is of interest to you. For teachers in Saskatchewan, it is a recognized program, the certificate program, and that will move you one step up on the grid. So if that's something that your teachers are interested in, that's we have a, a, quite a few teachers from Saskatchewan that are taking it and they can apply it directly to their field. If you could move to the next slide, please, Jessica. Good, so community support practitioner is something that is new. We were seeing a gap because we start with birth and we would like to do the whole lifespan. So it would take you up to working with adults with disabilities, providing that support as well as senior care. So it is a new program that's going to be offered face-to-face -face on campus starting in September and as well online. And it's a great opportunity, tons of jobs in the field for students that are interested in working with older adults or adults with disabilities as well. And our exciting news is on the next slide. We're getting a new building. So the Bentley building is quite old and we're, they're keeping the shell of the building, but all the inside has been torn out and will be renovated. So we will have brand new classrooms and we will have a brand new daycare, which will be wonderful. And we, our focus is very much for our early childhood education, as well as our child and youth care programs on campus, is bringing the outdoors in because the Vermilion campus is such a beautiful place to be. So we have an arboretum, we have an outdoor natural playscape where we take the children and a lot of our classroom time is spent outside as well. So we're hoping now with the new Bentley building revitalization, it will make that seamless transition between the classroom and our outdoor classroom as well. So our admission requirements for our programs is English. So a lot of times our students are coming in because they're not very strong in math or sciences. So we see that they have an English 30-1 or 30-2 and then the English language proficiency if needed. And like I said, there are a lot of jobs in the field and it's a great program. We have small classes, which is also very helpful. The students, sometimes they're combined for a course like human development, but then they're separated out for their own courses that are specific to their program. So they get a chance to mingle with the students in the other programs as well. Any questions? Yes, no, there's no living accommodations at the Alberta School for the Deaf. The students would have to find a place to stay. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Great. Thank you. We'll see if anyone has any more questions. And again, if you have questions about any program, you can feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, Sarah Jane also added the academic requirements and the English language proficiency requirements for healthcare aid uh, in the chat there. Um, if you'd like clarification on that, you can also reach out to myself. Um, I'll make sure that all our contact information is either in the last slide uh, or in the chat. And again, if you have any questions about the academic requirements or English language proficiency requirements for any of the programs that we're uh, chatting about today, just feel free to reach out to us. Okay, so we're going to jump ahead now. Um, Kelsey, I'll get to your slides. We're going to have our academic advisor with the uh, University Chancellor. Thanks, Kelsey. Okay, so my name is Kelsey Baddock. I am the academic advisor for the University Transfer Program uh, here at Lakeland. Uh, like Sean, I'm actually a past uh, alumnus as well of this program. Most of our courses are in person. I have a few doing online, but a student could never do fully online, so we are in person. Uh, essentially, we do one-on-one -on -one advising. Our professors are um, all have their masters with several having PhDs, uh, so you're getting the same education you would at a university. 
um, but with smaller class sizes. I do have a cheat sheet because I am going to go through things super fast. I can't attach it just because of the permissions, uh, but I will have that sent off uh, to recruitment enrollment so that they can send it with the recording. Um, so again, my cheat sheet has this. I'm just going to go over the new. With the changes with USAS nursing, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, medical lab science, you can technically do in one year again. Um, I don't fully recommend it. Students would do four sciences plus English in their first semester, um, which just really isn't super beneficial. However, it is an option. I'm still going to recommend the two year route. Uh, they spread it out over two years and then apply to the medical lab science. But again, they definitely can do it in one uh, for dentistry and pharmacy at U of A. Uh, we only do the one year officially. However, the course that we are missing is um, a physiology, a six credit physiology course. Students have taken this online and have successfully gotten into the program. So again, students could technically stay for two years, but they have to do an online physiology course in year two in both semesters. Um, ATEP. Uh, is still technically an option and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, it's now going to be fully online and we will not be a home campus uh, with a classroom set aside and their focus is on Indigenous students uh, so they're essentially only going to accept students with an Indigenous background. Uh, next slide. Uh, so just going into the other main institutions we do through Alberta, uh, just reiterating, we do still have the um, collaboration with the University of Calgary uh, in their education program, the community based one. Uh, so students can essentially do two years with us, two years with U of C. It is intermixed. So usually their first year is with us and then years two and three are mixed. And then year four is fully with the University of Calgary. Um, when they're in those particular semesters, they're fully online and they're doing four practicum. So they do a two, four, six, and an eight week practicum in each of those semesters. And then their in-person component is in the summer in July for two weeks. Uh, so if they're doing what we call the three year route, one year with us, three years kind of combo, uh, they go three times to Calgary for two weeks. The last couple of years it is lined up with the Calgary Stampede, uh, so I've had absolutely no complaints from my students. Um, the only thing we still don't have with the UFC is commerce. So art, science, um, education, that has all opened up with our collaboration with UFC, uh, but we still don't do it for commerce. We're just missing a few key courses. Next slide. So we're gonna talk about Saskatchewan. Um, nothing really has changed a lot. Um, just a reiteration, because it always seems to surprise students. Uh, for education at USASC, you can only do one year and then it's best to transfer. Um, if you end up staying two years, you're still probably going to have three years there. Uh, they just have some education classes that they don't really have transfer credit with and so it just makes it a lot more difficult. Super exciting though, our EDU 100 class only ever used to go uh, to U of A um, and U of SASC is now accepting it. So we're really pumped about that and that's the context of teaching so they actually do a practicum. Uh, just observation. Um, Nothing else has really changed with them, so let's talk about what's new. Next slide. Uh, so we have our largest number of students ever. Uh, so we have 329 students, and yes, I met with every single one of them, um, either in person, online, or through phone or email. Um, about 40% of our students are from Lloydminster, just a few kind of things. 65% are within 70 kilometers. Uh, so that's obviously really exciting for us, pulling from the kind of um, area around Lloydminster here. We do have an art course that should be in our calendar as a, or on our timetable as of next year. 
I don't know which semester it's going to be in, but we will have an art class, which is really exciting for our education students needing to do fine arts, uh, as that is another option besides music and drama. Uh, we do have dual credit uh, with Buffalo Trail School Divisions. So we have 16, 15 sorry, um, students uh, taking Psych 104 this semester and looking to potentially expand uh, into Social 100 next semester. Lloyd uh, um, Public and Lloyd Catholic School Divisions will join us in January. Uh, taking both business and university transfer classes. And I have one student from SunWest that is also taking classes in person uh, through dual credit. And she's taking a combination of um, business and university transfer. Uh, we do have the Learner Lab, sorry, I skipped, uh, which is the QLLS that I have talking or I have there. Uh, that is new. And so students are enrolled in it, first year students and they go over time management, reading strategies, just the things that we find students are sometimes missing coming straight out of high school, or maybe not missing, but just didn't realize um, how important those skills are. So just kind of building that. And then just a collaboration reminder, uh, we do have a collaboration with Athabasca where students can do arts and science degrees. Uh, I've already talked about the U of C community-based education, USASC nursing, um, really exciting. We have nurses on campus, uh, so we have now become a location. So the pre-professional year hasn't changed. Students can still do the pre-professional year, move on to Saskatoon, PA, wherever else they'd like, but Lloyd Minster is now also an option for them. Uh, so we have 15 students in year three, 21 or 20 students in year Sorry, um, and then a few uh, with hopefully adding a few more for year four. Um, and then I've also already talked about ATEP. And then Casper is just a reminder that a lot of institutions do require it, which is that online situational judgment test uh, with both video and text-based scenarios, U of A education, dental hygiene, and dentistry. Uh, ATEP is exempt from that. And then USAS, Dentistry, Nursing, Nutrition, Pharmacy, and VET. But for the VET at U of C, uh, it's only for shortlisted uh, students. Um, if you have any questions, uh, definitely let me know. I know I went through things super fast. And uh, I will send that cheat sheet to recruitment enrollment for you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Super informative. Okay, if you have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the chat. Alrighty. If there are no questions right now, we're gonna move along to Brandy, our academic advisor with business. Thanks, Brandy. All right, Hi. Hi. can everyone hear me all right? Perfect. All right, so uh, no changes to the actual programs, but I'm just going to kind of go through them a little bit again, just kind of go a little bit more in depth in some of them. So as you might know, we do have our one year certificate program. So one of them is the accounting technician program is the one year. So you'd process invoices, prepare tax returns, uh, you'll manage accounts payable and receivable, you'll do like a payroll of course, that kind of thing, and as long along with a variety of data entry um, things. So you'll learn lots of different accounting skills in there. Uh, we also have the administrative professional program. And sometimes I, I feel that this or I get worried that this program is seen as like a lower program. And so I'm like, I do want to express the um, what this administ administrative professional program does um, provide for students. So, you know, things that they'll be looking at, at a little bit more deeply would be bookkeeping and office procedures, uh, computer applications, human relations, communications, and then obviously because of what we're you know, our day and age and everything like that, are, they'll also get social media marketing skills as well. So this is goes very in depth into like what it's like working in an office and that kind of thing. Um, you know, even though our computer or our students in the 
diploma program might do a little bit of computer. These guys go a little bit more in depth in certain things and Excel and things that they're going to be using uh, in an office as well. So that's some awesome experience that they're going to get. But even more um, importantly, and kind of a more cool aspect to it, the last uh, handful of years, we've partnered with the Inspiring Women's Conference. And what our students actually do is they actually help plan, prepare, and execute that conference. And so it gives them a lot of awesome, like literally work experience for them, uh, for the resumes and kind of going on into the workforce and things like that. And then on top of that experience, they also get that three week practicum as well. So there's lots of awesome things about the administrative professional program. Um, then you might re know or uh, remember that we do have that business certificate. So it's a one year business certificate where they kind of explore a variety of areas or special specialties. And it's really good if they're if students are interested in kind of getting into the workforce uh, after one year kind of thing, um, which is really cool which is really cool um, for students to be able to exit with that certificate um, accordingly. So that's wonderful. Um, students also, we have some had, sorry, we also have had some students interested in doing some of our business courses to gain a blue seal mm -hmm. uh, or also our CCAP, which is called our Canadian Certified Administrative Professional Designation. So that's really cool for them. They can meet with me. Uh, most students will apply to business. They'll get flipped to open studies to do that, and then they'll pick out those courses that they need. So that's um, really cool there. Now, what's wonderful about our one-year certificates is that all of them, we have some laddering into our two-year diploma major, as you're probably the most familiar with when it comes to business. So, for example, the accounting technician and the business administration certificate, up to, depending on the major that they choose, almost all of them will go through and basically they slide right into the second year of the diploma major, um, which is really awesome. Our administrative professional, even, we've um, the way we've kind of worked it is that a handful of those courses will go into the uh, the diploma as well, which is really wonderful. So such as the social media marketing, which is a great elective, um, their communications and, and courses like that, and their computer skills also. So a lot of that is all um, laddered right into the diploma, which is absolutely awesome for those students. Um, and then as you might know, we have your two-year diploma, and then we have five different majors that go along with that. So the accounting, general business, uh, marketing, real estate appraisal and assessment, and small business and entrepreneurship. Uh, which is really fantastic. Uh, the first year is kind of all the same, similar to our business administration certificate, as I mentioned earlier, but then that second year it really starts to kind of go out into depending on the major that they're looking at. So marketing or real estate uh, general, sometimes students are interested in kind of getting certain things depending on what they want, or some students are just interested in trying a whole bunch of different things to kind of get a well-rounded base. So there's lots of opportunities there. Actually, our real estate appraisal and assessment major, a lot of our students coming out from the diploma, going right into the workforce, are actually starting to get um, salaries that are start around sixty-seven dollars to $83,000, which is really awesome for our students. So we've been really excited there. Uh, and then also the degree, just a little bit of a clarification. So it's not our program per se, but it's a collaboration that we have with Athabasca University. So their, it's their programs, the Bachelor of Commerce and the Bachelor of Management. And basically what happens is that a student that is, comes and gets our two-year diploma can transfer. It's, it's a block transfer agreement. So they all two years of their diploma go into their degree and they basically slide into year three of the either the commerce or the management depending on what they're interested in so commerce is the four year where they can choose a major they also have a couple extra majors um, such as human resource management or indigenous business or anything like that and uh a, you know a student that's interested like maybe started with accounting and they're like yeah you know what i'd rather move into marketing they can actually do that so they can kind of do different majors just because they started with accounting and the diploma doesn't mean they got to end with accounting there's lots of different things that they can kind of do with the degree at athabasca university so that's really cool because they get that opportunity to do some of their courses here they do have to do some of them online with Athabasca in order to meet their residency requirement, but they have that opportunity to be here at Lakeland College, which is a lot of, uh, which is the part, a big part of the reason why students want to be part of that collaboration is that they can stay here. That's something that I did. I'm an alumni of this, of not only the diploma, but the degree as well. And so it was, it was really cool to be able to stay here where it's smaller class sizes. Um, you're just, 
you know more of your instructors in your department and your school and that kind of thing and lots of different opportunities. All right, so let's flip over to the next slide there. So we've got some new things kind of going on um, over the last couple of years and even more so moving into online than we have in past years. So students can take the business administration certificate. It's that one year. So they can do it either completely face to face, completely online, or they can actually do a mix of both. So it just depends on what students are interested in doing. So that's wonderful that they have like all these different options on how they want to go about doing that. They can also take full-time courses or some students are like, yeah, I just need a little bit more money under my pocket or I have family and business or I have family and work and that kind of thing. And so they want to take it part-time and online or whatever the case may be. Uh, actually, the what's interesting too is part of the reason too that the online has become more um, desired recently, not only for mature students with family and work and stuff, but maybe students that don't feel like they're quite ready to leave home yet. I've have seen a little bit more of that or students that are like, hey, you know what? I really want to get started on my education. But with that said, you know, it'd be nice to stay home, do some of this online so they don't have to like worry about the living costs right away and save some money, which has been fantastic for them. So that's I'm really excited that we've been able to start offering more of that. And uh, some of our diploma majors are starting to reach a little bit more into the online options or blended options, I guess I should say as well. So that means that they may be able to take some of their second year courses online. Now this is dependent on the major. So if this is something that your student is interested, you can always reach out to me and kind of double check and what could that possibly look like for uh, online options in their second year. Because um, some are like real estate appraisal and assessment, for example, is not, but um, you know, maybe a little bit more options for marketing or uh, those kinds of th those kinds of uh, majors. So just so you have that. Now the most one of the most exciting things that we uh, do have coming up is that beginning 24 20 sorry 2024 and 2025 we will have all 10 second year courses available online for students to be able to complete their business administration diploma particularly in the general major. So they are limited in terms of what second year courses they can take, but the fact that we will have at least 10 online gives them that opportunity to do a diploma completely online if they so choose. And then, as I briefly mentioned before, students that are interested in pursuing either a three or four year degree through our collaboration will have a mix of online students as a mix of online courses as well. Um, what I've noticed is more and more those online courses are starting to be taken up a little bit more because uh, a lot of the students that are now graduating and coming in. They've had that experience online. They've had more online experience than maybe students that uh, started right, did more online right when the pandemic started. So the, anyway, it's they've uh, a lot of these students coming in have got more skills to be able to handle the online, which is really exciting for that. So yeah, all right. Next slide, please. All right, uh, I think we missed one. Did it get moved? Okay, so, sorry, that was next when I, when I had it in there, so I apologize for that. So one of the things I do want to mention briefly, Kelsey also briefly mentioned it as well, is we do have um, high school dual credit for students that are interested in doing so uh, that are in Saskatchewan. Uh, so the two courses that we particularly offer are business law and uh, marketing principles. Now, um, LPSD and LCSD, we've had this agreement go on for, you know, a number of years, which has been awesome. And we hope to continue that with having students being able to take those courses, because what's wonderful about taking those courses in their uh, second semester is that it goes now that they've got one course done, if they decide to come into the diploma uh, or the certificate or whatever it is that they are interested in wanting to do. But now we have those online options. So we're able to expand a little bit further into Saskatchewan too. I've actually had a number of students reach out to me in the last little bit um, asking about those courses and you know when they are uh, when they have the opportunity to be online and that kind of thing. And uh, what's nice is that any student can do this. So a student can reach out to me or the school on their behalf. It just depends on how you want to go about it. Uh, we can talk about what this entails and, and all that kind of thing. I do have them fill out an application form. Same thing that they would fill out 
if they were part of the second year group that's coming in from LPSD or LCSD. Uh, and now the one thing, the process in that is once they fill that out, I do call either the school or the school division to confirm that those are students. And then afterwards we will send that transcript out so that the uh, school division can enter their marks into their um, diploma to the ministry, send those off to the ministry and that kind of thing. So this is a really exciting opportunity for students to be able to do that. Um, if you are looking at possibly uh, creating like a memorandum of understanding or anything like that for students to be able to do this a little bit more often, um, definitely reach out and we can kind of get that started as well. But any student can do this, uh, uh, particularly now that we have the online offerings as well. So that's exciting for lots of students. All right, and then let's go back to that other slide. <laughs> Perfect. Um, oh, okay. So uh, unfortunately, the slide that I sent didn't go through properly, it looks like. Um, so actually on the side there, when it says be resume ready and all that kind of thing, I actually had some different points there, uh, but that's okay. So what I can do is I can kind of just go through some of those points that I had originally. So beyond the classroom, we actually have lots of different experiences that we really want to show our students. So, you know, we talked about human uh, services and energy and all those different practicums and labs and all those really cool things that they get to do here at Lakeland College. And sometimes uh, I feel like, you know, business students are kind of like, oh, well, I don't know what else to do. So I'm just going to do business. And, you know, what we really want to do is explore and show um, students and individuals that we have more here than just, you know, oh, it's just business um, and the different opportunities that they can take advantage of. So, for example, I mentioned the Inspiring Women's Conference for the administrative professional students that are interested in being part of that program. We also have events like Dress for Success where students get to learn, um, you know, dressing appropriately for different areas. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for adding that, um, SJ, putting up those different uh events and and opportunities for students there uh we also have like the annual chamber connect so that's where our different industry partners and everything come in for an evening at lakeland college and students get to actually connect and network with all these different individuals we've actually had uh employers reach back out in previous years um after the chamber connect and they say hey you know i met a student and i kind of want to connect with them and uh encourage them to apply you know they made a great first impression whatever the case may be so we've actually had opportunities like that and I think sometimes we don't um, express enough the opportunities that they can get through business. Uh, we also have the Alberta Deans of Business Case Competition so we've actually had students compete against other colleges you probably were aware of this uh, where they're given a case and uh, they all have to like kind of dive into that case and come up with solutions to solve you know the problems of whatever that business is experiencing they'll present it and defend it so that's huge. We, in, in previous years we've actually had first second third places like in a handful of the years we've, we've been doing it so that's been really great for Lakeland College. Um, this year we actually have like the Blue Book program so that is through the 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 MAGI, I hope I'm saying it correctly, Center through Nate. And this is a program that we've connected with so that we can allow students and students just need to take at least one class per semester. They can go through and they can actually go through the different courses and things that are offered through that as well and get help and advice um, with presenting like their business idea. Uh, one of the stories that actually had come out of that is that a student was going to, you know, mom and dad was wanting them to get into uh school i think he i believe uh angela said he took engineering or something to that effect didn't really like it at the time so he dropped out and then eventually he kind of jumped into business and did this blue book program and um but just before that he was doing some uh like he was being a waiter i guess at like different rest different restaurants and he was noticing that people weren't you know able to save quite as well and stuff like that and so he came up with like this little excel app or something that kind of helps students uh or i guess i should say workers like save their money so if you need two thousand dollars for a trip it would automatically you know save your money that way 
he and through this blue book program, he got the exposure and help and the information kind of needed. And he was able to sell that to a major bank. This guy's a millionaire now uh, running around doing different things and stuff like that. And so we're really excited to be able to introduce this blue book program to students that are very interested in maybe presenting their idea or, you know, taking their idea to the next level. Uh, we also have the co-op internship, which is probably something you've been familiar with before. So the opportunity for students in the diploma between years one and two be able to do a 16 week practicum. And before that, we give them uh, opportunities to you know, be resume ready and uh, interviews and all those kinds of skills that they need in order to get out into the into the workforce and some of them from this opportunity have actually gained employment from after their studies. So that's been really exciting there. Um, Kelsey, uh, Kelsey mentioned the student success tutorials, uh, the QLSS essentially, and that's been great that they've been able to kind of learn these skills or kind of recognize the importance of these skills as they come into college. Uh, we also have like the majors meeting, so we're excited to be, it's actually starting next week on Tuesday for our students that are interested, or maybe they just started in general because they have no idea what to do, And but instead we give them these opportunities to learn about all the different majors and see what their, what kind of career opportunities that they have, or what kind of pathways they can take, and those kinds of things. So we're very excited about all those opportunities. Basically a big part of business and what we really want to uh, show not only incoming students, but just everyone in general is that business isn't just, oh, just business, right? Like it's just, oh, you're taking some marketing and you're taking some accounting. It really gives you the opportunities to explore and be able to network and connect with other people. So we're very excited about that. Um, so with that said, that's the end of my presentation. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks, Brandy. All right. So if anyone has questions about any of the business programs, uh, co-op opportunities, or any of the other programs that we've touched on, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we're just going to wrap this up pretty quickly here. My apologies. We have went over time a little bit. Um, so right here, you will see a QR, uh, a QR code on your screen. Um, feel free to scan that and you can stay connected as a high school counselor. Um, there's some resources there for you. So I'll just leave this up just for a moment. Uh, you can go ahead and scan this. Uh, we'll be sending out this presentation as well. So this will be available to you uh, in your email when you receive that. Um, when you receive this presentation, you'll be able to pull up this QR code as well. And SJ has also put this in the chat. Thanks so much, SJ. Okay. So again, just uh, a little bit more info about Open House. Um, you're welcome to RSVP at lakelandcollege.ca on our main page or slash Open House. Um, if you would like to bring a group of high school students to Open House, please do reach out to us at hello at lakelandcollege.ca. Um, our team will make sure we get that information and that we have um, the resources and that we have uh, staff here to help assist and make sure that everything goes smoothly. So we would love to see you all. Students can apply for free. If they don't know what they're looking to do next year, they can come and get an idea of what we have to offer um, the environment, uh, the campus, both campuses. So um, a great opportunity for them. We're going to be giving out prizes. Um, there's going to be fun games. I know a lot of the departments put a lot of work into open house and um, there's some really cool things that they have planned for this year. So um, do do come out if you can and do encourage your students to attend. I'll just move over to the next slide. And that is that's the end of our counselors updates. So thank you so much everyone for coming out and um, for sitting in on this update. If you have questions at any time, um, feel free to email or call. We will put our information in the chat. I'll put my email in the chat as well. Um, and I'll just open it up for questions. You're, you're welcome to head out if you'd like to, but I will open up for questions if anyone wants to type them in the chat or if you wanna turn on your mic. Thank you, everyone. I don't see any more questions. So again, feel free to reach out through email if you have any other questions and uh, we'll go ahead and stop recording and we hopefully will see that open house. Thank you.